Broadway, listen to the Broadway bees. Broadway makes you wanna move your feet. Everybody's tapping into everything that's happening on Broadway bees. Broadway bees. Broadway bees. Hello, I'm Richard Ridge for Broadway Beat. Manhattan Theatre Club has brought David Ives' play Venus and Fur to Broadway to their Samuel J. Friedman Theatre. Once again, under the direction of Walter Bobby, it stars Nina Arianda and Hugh Dancy. And we're here to celebrate with the company on opening night. So, is this you? Hmm? What? This. Is it you? Pushensky Novacek, Novacek oh. Pushensky. No, this isn't me. Maybe you're Vonda. This play doesn't have anything to do with me. Mm, you're just peeping over the fence. You're just the writer. Oh, I'm sorry, adapt. Why do people always think a playwright has to be the people he writes about? Because playwrights do that shit all the time. You put me in a play, I'll fucking kill you. Can't I just write characters? Sure, and you just happen to find these characters in an ancient German s and novel, Herr Dr. Novacek. It's a famous book. Okay, so you didn't have an innocent instant when you were 12? No. In the library no. with a cat? No, again, no. Maybe you're still waiting on your big moment. All right, look, look. I thought this relationship was fascinating. Very rich, very complex. Okay. I, I thought the story was dramatic, naturally theatrical. Mm, it is the lady that protests too much. <laughs> Oh, well, it's, it's thrilling to, to be on Broadway with anything, but to be on Broadway with this play and Nina, you know, amazing, brilliant, new Nina, you know, who is a goddess, um, and uh, with Hugh, who is extraordinary, you know, and I've loved him so much in other shows, and so seeing him in this has been, and working with him in this has been such a thrill. So, you know, it's, uh, it's 100 grams of adrenaline. Take me back to the beginning of how this play all came about, David. Oh, I wrote this play a couple of years ago based on this old German pornographic Victorian novel, if, the, if that makes any sense to you. And, um, and so uh, I, was just in, I was just in love with this, with this old German erotic novel, and it turned, it turned into this obsession of my own with this obsessional relationship in the book, this sort of strange power struggle between these, this man and this woman and how, how their love, hate, um, illusion, disillusion, happiness gets all mixed together into this theatrical bundle. And so that's how it, it just sort of wrote itself, really. And then you had it at CSC, this beautiful production where, you, you know, you and Walter Bobby discovered Nina Arianda with Wes Bentley. I thought it was beautiful there, but it's been taken to a whole other level here. Yes. Um, well, at Classic Stage, it was, it was sort of an, inst an erotic installation. And, and here it's kind of, you know, an extraordinary larger event because of just the size of the, the, the theater and the... And uh, I don't know, it's, it's Broadway. What could, you know, it's a uh, German erotic novel comes to Broadway. How, how bad can that be? Well, the interesting thing about the play when I first got it was that it was just an adaptation of the novella. It was just what we now see as the play within the play. And I said to David, I don't think we can actually do this. I don't think we can actually watch that event take place literally in Victorian times. And and it doesn't feel like we'll have a contemporary access to these characters. Six months later, he came back with what we now see as his play, Venus and Fur, and he took that initial adaptation of the novella and incorporated it into this much more complex, psychologically layered piece, and it was dazzlingly impressive. And I said, just let's do it, let's just do it. It was a scary play to wrestle with, really, because the psychological complexities of it and finding two actors willing to explore those ideas was uh, challenging, invigorating, ultimately thrilling. Okay, so take me back, because at CSC you had Nina Arianda, who you discovered, and Wes Bentley. How did you come up with that pairing first? Well, Nina walked through the door one day. James Calary said, oh, there's an actress I want you to meet. She came through the door, and it was just like the play. I went, oh, well, fine. And then she actually 
we saw before our eyes the first scene of the play happen because this woman we had never heard of before came in. She seemed like a real crackpot. And suddenly she turned to the classic part of the play and was a revelation. And we thought, our work here is done. We have a star, a new star has been discovered this afternoon. I actually wanted to stop the auditions and call her a agent immediately before she got another job because I thought, this girl's getting hired today, this week. Sometime today, I felt as if I didn't know the first thing about them or this play. <laughs> Suddenly an actor turns to you and says, what should I do? Who am I right here? And you have no idea. You can't remember who you are, much less what they're supposed to be. Well, you just play the director. Uh, Sweetheart, I want this part moving and tragic and <laughs> blah, 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 funny. And while you're crossing down, <laughs> you look at both sides right at the same time. All right, play a director. I'll, yeah, I'll try that. But maybe for Kushensky, you should try a little, I don't know, an accent or something. Oh, uh, be more continental. Be more continental, uh, exactly. Oh, sorry, uh, something continental. So, um, is this continental? Or, or is it um, idiotic? That's it. Yeah. <laughs> this show is taking quite a journey, hasn't it? I would say so, from downtown to uptown. That's a, that's a hell of a feat. Take me back to the beginning. Talk about that first audition that you did with Walter and what that was like. Well, I'll tell you the week before. Okay. The week before I got the script and I read it and I instantly, no jokes, I instantly fell in love with her and, and the play and him and everything about it. And I've never had that happen to me in that kind of in a, in that kind of a full way. And I kept rereading it and rereading it and kind of seeing the way things could be. And I knew that I had a very small shot of getting it, but I, whatever, I got it. <laughs> it's very exciting. And um, coming from downtown uptown, it is, it's very different and it's lovely. It's very special for all of us. I fell madly in love with this show downtown with you and Wes Bentley. Yes. But you and Hugh Dancy, total different dynamics. It's incredibly different. Yeah, of course, because they're two different people, you know. And um, it is, it's, it's, yeah, it's an incredibly, he informs me on everything that I do, just like Wes did downtown. And, and I love that. I love that about this show. It's not us, really. It's really not us. It's David Ives. His words can create kind of this amazing palette for all actors to kind of grasp from. And that's all him and it's all Walter, you know? And, and I'm very, very grateful for that. Talk about working with Hugh Dancy. The yeah. two of you work so well together. We did, yeah, we had a really lovely working experience. And I think it's mostly because he is an incredibly generous actor and he's an incredibly kind man, period. And that kind of combination with the dim, with the vulnerability that this that that part demands, um, it's kind of perfect, and he does it so incredibly well that it's an honor to be on stage with him. Well, I mean, obviously we're we're in a proscenium uh, downtown. They were it was a three quarter thrust stage, you got o audience on three sides. The best way it was described to me was actually by Walter, who said he you know he's obviously watched it several different occasions and watched it up from the uh, from the mezzanine and said it's like. It's like rear window, you know, you feel voyeuristic. You feel like you're looking into somebody's apartment and they're having this astonishing evening. So I guess the truth is that I imagine doing it downtown or doing it here would be the same in that you try not to remember that there are other people in the room with you. And it's all about me and her circling each other and locking into each other and having this intensifying night that we're having. You always come back to do theater. You go back to do film. What do you love about doing theater? Um, <laughs> I love the, 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 the reward. If, if, it's, you know, if you're doing something which is working, the reward is immediate. Um, you, you're, and I don't even mean about the audience. I mean the reward for yourself. And it's, it's total. It's not, you know, it's not piecemeal as filming can be. You don't have to wait for six months for the thing to be put together. It's, you know for yourself that it's working and, um, and that, that kind of quietens a part of my self-critical brain that filming doesn't. You're doing very, very well, Thomas. I might take you on as my servant permanently. Will there be anything else, mistress? Yes, one more thing. Call Stacy and tell her that you won't be coming home tonight. 
I can't do that. Oh no. You can't? And you can't tell her why either. No excuses, lame or otherwise. Hi, right, hi, right, Stacy, it's me. I won't be coming home tonight. I won't be coming home tonight. No excuses. I can't tell you why. Say goodbye. Goodbye. Hang up. Turn off your phone. 